Hi there and welcome to another HTMX tutorial. In this one we're going to extend the setup that we had last time and we're going to include trigger modifiers and CSS transitions. We're going to see what those are in a minute. But this is what we got to last time, this form here, where we could type in a username and HTMX will dynamically send an Ajax request to the back end. So now we're going to extend this and we're going to look at trigger modifiers and I've got the HTMX documentation open here. So what is a trigger modifier? On the sidebar we can click um, the trigger modifiers link and that will take us down to this. And what it says is that it, a trigger can have modifiers that change its behaviour. So remember that the triggers are actions such as click and mouse enter and key up and submit and the modifiers enable you to change the way that these behaviours occur. Now some modifiers you have here, for example, there's a once modifier that means that you can only do the specified action or the request once, can't be done multiple times. You have other modifiers such as delay, which specify that if you perform this action multiple times, you can delay sending the request until, for example, one second where you have never sent any actions. So we're going to see what these mean um, in this tutorial. So let's get started by extending the setup we had here. We've got a view that returns HTML data and it's called check username. Now what we want to do is we want to experiment with these trigger modifiers. So if we go to our register.html template, this is the field that's being rendered and the trigger is specified here and the trigger is key up because when the user types into this field, when the key goes up, then we are actually going to send a request from HTMX. So we're going to modify this by adding a delay. Now let's see what the delay gives us. We're going to delay the request being sent by two seconds. Now let's see what happens when we do that. I'll refresh the page and I'll open the network tab as well here so you can see that the post requests are being sent. So we're delaying by two seconds. So if I start typing M, you see that the post request is delayed by two seconds. So every character I type, it takes two seconds until the request gets sent. Now one interesting thing about this is that it, if you type a character such as M and then you type another character, A, it's not going to send the request for just M because the other character has occurred within the time period of the delay. That means it's only going to send one request and if, if you look at the request body you, you see MA here. So this gives you a way to prevent sending hundreds of requests to your server. Instead you only send the request when you receive no action for a specified time, in this case two seconds. So that means I can gradually type mark here and it's only ever going to send one request after two seconds of no typing and you finally send that Ajax request. This is an important thing to know about because you can avoid overloading your server with unnecessary Ajax requests. So that can be much better for performance and the way to achieve that with HTMX is to specify a delay. And in this case it's the key up action but you could also uh, do this with any action in HTML. Moving on we have another one called throttle and this is similar to delay. It means that we only ever send requests every two seconds. Now you'll see what this means if we refresh the page. If we now start typing mark here, I'll clear the tab, you see that even though we're typing, every two seconds another request is getting sent. So it's not sending a request every time that we type, but every two seconds that there is an action, it will then send the request to the server. Now the main difference between throttle and delay is that throttle it guarantees that you do execute the function every two seconds in this case, whatever the time period might be. If there's any action, then the function will be executed uh, within that time period. With delay, that's not the case. When you delay, what you're saying is if you receive another action before the time period expires, then you're not going to send the request. Instead, the time is going to be reset and you're going to wait another two seconds before send in a request but only if you don't get another action so it's a subtle difference. One last trigger modifier is changed. For example if I type mark here and if I was to highlight the K and then retype K it's not going to send the request because it's not changed. You've just removed a character and immediately replaced it with the same character so there's no change therefore no request. 
so it can be useful to know about these trigger modifiers. By far the most useful are the delay and the throttle modifiers because they can help you avoid sending too many AJAX requests to your server. Now the second part of this tutorial, we're going to quickly look at CSS transitions. Now HTMX provides you in the documentation a very short section on transitions. It's very easy to create these in HTMX. You just return your HTML with the same ID and then you specify in your CSS class the transition property. So let's see how to do that just now. I'm going to change the response from the view to match this ID here. So let me go to views.py and we'll set an ID property of username error. And oh, let's remove that. And we'll copy that in here too. And we're going to now create classes called success and error. So success when the username is available and it's going to be a class of error when the username is unavailable. So we're going to return this HTML and we're going to swap it into this div here. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to create some CSS classes and I've got a styles.css here and I'm going to copy and paste the success class which is going to display green text for indicating success and we're going to just paste that in here and the error class is going to contain red text. Now we'll see what a CSS transition does. It, it allows you to animate the content on your page. The next step is we are going to edit the base.html and I'm going to load Django's static and that will allow us to reference static files easily within the template. Just fix that. And finally we're going to load in the, this is a custom CSS file. And we're going to link to a file here. I'm going to copy paste this. And this references within a static folder, which we're going to set up in a minute, uh, the CSS slash styles.css. Now, if we go to the settings.py, we're going to set up the static file DIRS. Static files DIRS. And that's going to be a list. And this points to all the folders containing your static files. Now we have a base directory in settings.py and it's a pathlib.path object so we can then chain to that another directory static. Now this is where our static files live in the base directory which is the root directory and then within there the static folder. So when we load the static files here and reference css slash styles.css what that's going to do is it's going to load in the CSS styles.css style sheet and that's where we've made these classes here. So with that we can now start testing this. So now we can load the browser and we should hopefully see that this works. So if I start typing in mark here, as soon as we get to the K, with, there's a two second animation, a transition here where it gradually turns red. Let's see why that happens. In our view, we're returning a div with the same ID as we had before and to a class of error or success. And within the style sheet, which is styles.css, we are specifying a transition on all of the changes in the, in the style. And we're saying ease in, which means go slowly at first and then quickly at the end, and a two second duration for the animation. So if I change the duration to 0.5 seconds, that's half a second, so this will go a bit quicker. And we refresh the page. You can see the animation is much quicker here when you go from green to red and vice versa. Now what we can do is we can have a bit of fun with that and we can add some more complex style changes here. So when there's an error, we want to really make the user aware of that error. We'll say font size of 50 pixels. And we'll also specify a rotation here. Now there's a trans uh, transform CSS attribute and we can say rotate 45 degrees. Now we're going to perform a transition over two seconds, let's say, where when we go from success to error, we're going to rotate the element 45 degrees, we're going to change the font size to 50 pixels and we're going to change the colour to red. So let's see what that looks like in the browser now. So we start typing and it's all good here but when we go to mark that username exists. So we start getting this crazy transition here where the font size is increased to 50 pixels the colors are red and it's rotated 45 degrees and again you know when you go back to the r this will change back and that's now going back there's a transition each way here in the document 
So this is pretty cool and you can do any crazy thing you want with this. We could do five seconds here for a very gradual transition. The longer the duration, the you know, the, the longer it will take. But when you do it the other way, you can see it goes very quickly because we've got a duration here of 0.5 seconds. So you can do these crazy CSS animations. This one isn't particularly usable. This is just not a good user experience. Don't do this at home. Um, but on the other hand, you could make some very engaging animations in CSS very easily with this HTMX property. Because you return HTML from your HTMX endpoints, that allows you to do this kind of thing where you keep the IDs, but you specify transitions when things do change. So that wraps up this quick video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Check out the blog post if you've enjoyed it for more details. And we'll see you in the next video.